Okay, so November 17, 2021, we've been teased with armor for the first time. August 16, 2022, they've shown us Nocturian armor again. Six months later. Freaking armor is here. God damn, I've been waiting for so long. And you know what? I spent 30 or more Tesseracts with diamond keys and got like zero armor. Zero Carl. Yeah, but fear not, friends. Geek5 spent all his Cedars tokens and he succeeded. Well, succeeded to test it out. And, of course, come with the best builds and he did it for you guys. So, in my humble opinion, this sacrifice truly deserves your damn like. And if you think I'm manipulating, well, actually I am. But come on, guys, drop your like, watch this video until the very end to learn the best builds with armor, without armor, with gadgets, with weapons and so on, 1 vs 1, 3 vs 3, etc. So this guide is going to be legendary. Let's roll, folks. Okay, instant spoiler, armor is OP. You'll be tearing your enemies apart if you have it, and your enemies will be tearing you apart in case you don't. And yeah, the fun part, Armor has a pretty lower effect on power, so you'll be facing these lucky owners all the time. But okay, let's move step by step. So the patch version 0.2.18 brought us armor, and the gameplay won't be the same ever again. Now we have armor for all three races. Well, in case you forgot, Raptorian, Voltron and Ogia. So each armor has six tiers, and of course, the higher the tier, the greater the increase in the stats. So you can see the stats of every armor. They are identical, and the only thing that changes from race to race is the type of resistance. Another important thing is a new skill, but it's not working yet. So let's keep an eye on that. Well, the power calculations are a bit more complicated than it seems at first. So due to a large increase in multiple parameters, you will get more overall power once armor is equipped than indicated. For example, tier 6 armor adds around 300 power, which is a lot. Okay, so now let's discuss how the armor introduction affects the meta. As you can understand, it is huge. Armor is an early freshman, so the value is comparable. You get free HP and damage, while the increase in power is not that big. Even if you cannot find enemies instantly due to low DAY, you will find helpless victims sooner or later, and they will stand no chance against you. So, easy win. The value of weapons drops significantly in the case of Wave Modulator, to actually zero. So if you have tier 6 armor, you'll get plus 35 damage, which turns your basic attacks into devastating blows. So who needs Taser when you can combine armor and Freshman? I hope you get my logic here. Change in pecking order. While Voltrons remain the number one pick for 1 vs 1 fights, changes of Raptorians become slightly higher due to the HP increase, of course. Well, Ogier is still not welcome for 1 vs 1. No armor, well, death sentence. First time. <laughs> this point correlates with the first one. So the effect of armor on the balance is too significant. And once you manage to get armor for yourself, unfortunately, unlike freshmen, it can't be obtained from these Tesseracts, you will not be able to compete with other players. On the positive side, armor balances the situation with freshmen. So, well, not all players can spend 110 bucks on in-game gadgets. Well, actually, very few can. Next, fights become more dynamic. You see, with a huge boost to damage comes faster fights. And well, because it takes fewer turns to kill your opponent, which is positive for both sides, I think. So far, armor is a bit controversial, but I hope the developers will adjust the in-game balance soon. However, I can't imagine how to solve the weapons problem if there are two safe current guns. Geek5 spent hours just testing out different tiers of armor and also builds, and here's his expert take right from the battlefield. First, about the tiers of armor. So everything is as simple as possible. 
The higher the tier, the better. Ideally, you want to have exactly six, but if you are not lucky enough to get it from the loot box, do not despair. Four or five tiers are also good, and one and three to a lesser extent. As mentioned earlier, there are no special changes in 1v1 battles, so Voltron is still the best pick because of his high attack and high HP, and with armor equipped, both stats become even cooler. The Reptorian will get more chances to win due to the HP boost, obviously. For Ogya, well, unfortunately, nothing much has changed. But he will still be able to easily beat an opponent without armor. However, the distribution of skill points has changed. Armor tier 6 gives plus 35 damage, which is even more than freshmen. And this means that you have the right to send additional points to HP or agility, and best of all, both stats completely ignoring attack. With this distribution, you'll go first, still deal high damage, and be incredibly hard to kill. Just in balance. It is important to unequip a weapon because, well, you will not use it at all. This will allow you to find opponents with lower power and increase your win rate significantly. While not most players have armor, I recommend abusing it for the sake of easy victories. Okay, leveling for 3 versus 3 battles has also changed, especially if you have both armor and freshman. The composition of the pack has not changed, so Raptorian, Ogia, Voltron, a great option still, but now you can completely ignore the attack. Instead, focus on agility to guarantee each of your heroes' first turn advantage and on the first or second turn, guarantee to kill one enemy hero before he manages to make a move. The counterplay of this strategy will be the pumping of very tenacious heroes. So, all down in HP, like more fat. Due to survivability, you will be able to defeat thinner but faster opponents. But not only the combination of armor and freshman will be effective. Mars Dao chip will come in handy too. An increase in agility will allow you to go first and attack your opponent on the second turn. Okay, remember the days when Freshman was just introduced in a popular pack back then was Free Ogia, which like destroyed opponents with their AoE attack. So these times are actually back. I mean, literally. On the second turn, you can take down the whole team. Although you will need to guarantee yourself the right to make the first move, so spend some points in agility. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, Armor is definitely worth hunting for, and also use Diamond Key to get a higher chance of obtaining it. Of course, aim at tier 6 as the most desirable option. And Geekfy had around a 10% chance for Armor in his go. Armor is a big game changer that will fully show its potential upon this skill implementation. So, in the common future, Armor will have an even bigger impact on meta that's done off now, although now it's actually too huge. Oh, and by the way, watch Geekfy's recent stream to find more advanced tactics with armor and also share your own results. Like, did you manage to get tier 6? How many Tesseracts you needed? And did armor actually live up to your expectations? We would like to know everything, so share it in the comments below. As usual, thanks for watching, guys. Like this one, subscribe to the channel, and see you soon.